Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, may I ask your attention, please? Before we start, I am going to announce the rules that need to be followed by all participants. First, this webinar will run for about two hours. Second, each participant must have filled out the registration and evaluation form. Third, participants are advised to mute their mic to reduce the ground noise. Host will be automatically mute all participants. Four, there will be question and answer session but participants can ask during presentation by Q&A room chat. Fifth, the moderator will pick up some of questions in Q&A room chat. Participants who do not fill out the registration and evaluation form will not get an effectivity. The webinar will be recorded. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, it's clearly. Sound is less or okay? So sound okay? Sound okay? Sounds okay. Okay. Yes. Bueno, can you try your voice there? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, we don't have to try a point there. Hello, Martin. 
Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, it is clear. The sound is clear. Jelas suaranya. Oke, okay, jelas. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, itu nanti suaranya lebih keras. Kita lebih keras suaranya. Iya. Yeah. Oke, okay, lebih keras lagi ya. Seperti ini? Oke. Oke. Ya. Ya. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here this morning. Welcome to the webinar, Research and Clinical Education Innovation in COVID-19 Pandemic. The Honorable Head of Nursing Study Program, Faculty of Nursing and Health Sciences, University of Muhammadiyah Smara. Dr. Sandy Poder, Master of Science, PhD, Diploma Jaya. Senior Research Director and Executive Editor of Publication, Member of Board of Studies, Lincoln University College, Malaysia. Nurse Trinur Hidayati, Master of Medical Education, Department of Nursing, Faculty of Nursing and Health Sciences, University of Muhammadiyah Smart, and all of the participants in the webinar. Indonesia Raya Speech by Head of Master of Nursing Program, University of Muhammadiyah Semarang. We invite Dr. Vivi Yusafianti Pohan M. Would you please? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Dr. Sandeep Podar, MSG, PhD, Professor Masruki MPD, as Director of UNIMUS, Dr. Ali Roshidi Mkes, as the Dean of Nursing and Health Science Faculty, and ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. 
My name is Vivi Yosafianti Pohan. It is my pleasure on behalf nursing master program at Muhammadiyah University of Semarang, known as Unibus. To welcome you all to the research and clinical education innovation in COVID-19 pandemic web seminar today. I would like to offer my thanks to our recorded speaker, Dr. Sandeep Poder, MSCPhD, from Lincoln University of Malaysia. We are very delighted to have you with us participate and share in this moment. It is important to continue the developing and innovation in health sector research especially in the setting of COVID-19 situation. Nowadays, public health is vulnerable to the transmission of coronavirus. As the first prevention aid, people need to be well educated and exposed to the right information. And of course, the patient needs to be treated with the accurate method. Nursing is one of the important subfiles of health sector, particularly for managing patient care. The health sector expert must take active roles in the latest research. New findings and innovation are accepted to overcome coronavirus transmission in the future. Nursing master program at Unimus in the development of nursing research with the educational objective to increase the nurse knowledge, skill, and attitude through nursing research. In this pandemic of COVID-19 period, nurse is called a new problem which is related to validation and accuracy data for a study. This was captured by the Unimus Nursing Master Program as an opportunity to continue to develop and improve nursing research. The web, this webinar is going to run around two hours and lead by Desi Ariana as moderator. I sincerely hope you will be enjoying the webinar. So, we will have new insight also encourage health and nursing research to innovate the better finding. Thank you for your participation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The big challenge for university students is how to prepare young people to face the demands of the time. Universe nursing program is present not only pursuing the profession, but also contributing in the fields of nursing and health, both in Indonesia and international. Let's be watching the Universe promotion video. Bagi perguruan tinggi saat ini adalah bagaimana mempersiapkan generasi muda untuk menghadapi tuntutan kemajuan zaman. Universitas Muhammadiyah Semarang hadir tak hanya mengejar ranking, namun juga mencetak lulusan yang turut berkontribusi pada ekonomi dan kemajuan sosial serta berorientasi pada kelompok lintas multidisiplin ilmu. Ada delapan fakultas di Unimus yang terus melakukan inovasi pembelajaran demi menghasilkan lulusan yang siap menghadapi tantangan globalisasi. Fakultas-fakultas tersebut di antaranya Fakultas Ilmu Keperawatan dan Kesehatan Fakultas Kedokteran Fakultas Kesehatan Masyarakat Fakultas Bahasa dan Budaya Asing Fakultas Matematika dan Ilmu Pengetahuan Alam Fakultas Teknik Fakultas Ekonomi Dan Fakultas Kedokteran 
TV. Masuk Universitas Muhammadiyah Semarang bisa lewat jalur tes atau melalui jalur prestasi meliputi penelusuran siswa berprestasi, pemikat penelusuran minat dan bakat, jalur bebas tes tulis, tersedia pula beasiswa probea, program mahasiswa doa dan perkomi penelusuran atlet komi. serta jalur khusus berita dari Muhammadiyah dan para hafiz. Bidik besi atau kartu Indonesia Pintar. Hubungi bagian PMB di kampus Jalan Gedung Mulu Raya nomor 18 Semarang atau klik pmb.minibus.ac.id. Minibus, the university for the excellence. University for the Excellence. Currently, we are celebrating the coronavirus. To all participants, please fill out the link of registration. Kepada seluruh peserta webinar, dipersilakan untuk mengisi link registrasi yang sudah ditampilkan di screen. Currently, we are shocked by the coronavirus, COVID-19. Transmission is very fast, and the increasing number of people who test positive COVID-19 to make the government implement physical distancing policies for prevention of the spread of COVID-19. This policy has major impact on various sectors of life, one of which is education. The process of higher education should also be done with the right approach can also have efforts to restrain the rate of growth of the outbreak. How can innovation in clinical education and research in order to keep it running during COVID-19 pandemic? Presentation and discussion will be conducted by Nurse Desi Ariana Rahayu and group as a moderator. Mrs. Desi Ariana Rahayu is a lecturer of mental health nursing, faculty of nursing and health sciences, University of Muhammadiyah Semarang. She was graduate master of nursing from University of Indonesia. One of topics of research experience is positive affirmation on coping mechanism of chronic renal failure patient. Mrs. Desi, would you please? Thank you, Bu Dewi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this nursing webinar entitled Research and Clinical Education Innovation in COVID-19 Pandemic. Held by Nursing School of Universitas Muhammad Yasmara. Let me introduce myself. My name is Desi Ariana Rahayu. And I will be serving you as the moderator for this webinar session today. First of all, I would like to thank to the speakers, Dr. Sandy Kodar and Nurse T. Nur Hidayati, and all audiences for joining this webinar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the presentation, I would like to read the sequence for this webinar session. This webinar will be run as panel discussion and divided into three sessions. The first session is presentation, the second session is discussion, and the third session is evaluation. Okay, for the first speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Sandeep Kodar to deliver his presentation about research innovation in COVID-19 pandemic in Malaysia. But before the presentation, I would like to read about his curriculum he takes.
Dr. Sandeep Kojar, MSG, PhD, Diploma of Jagat, was born in December 27, 1972. His nationality is India. His present designation now is as Senior Research Director in Lindow University College, Malaysia, and then as an Executive Editor in Lindow University College, Member of Board of Study, Lindow University College, and Member of Working Committee, Malaysian Citation Center, Ministry of Education, Malaysia. His educational background, he completed his Bachelor of Science in Zoology in University of Calcutta, India in 1993. And then he continued his diploma in Diabetics in the same university and finished in 1995. And then he continued his Master of Science in Zoology in Dialbach Educational Institute, Duke University, in Ankara, India, and finished in 1998. And his recent study is in PhD of Science in Zoology in University of Calcutta, India, in 2004. Okay. Uh, he also has a lot of uh, research and publication background. And now I will invite Dr. Sandeep Potter. Hello there. Good morning, Dr. Potter. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Potter. Can you hear our voice clearly? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. So, how are you doing today? You can hear me? How are you doing today? Yes, fine. Yes, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Dr. Sandy Fodder, now you can start the presentation. The time is yours. Thank you. I first uh, make my thankful regards to all the organizers of UNIMUS. And it is my proud privilege to be part of this conference. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vivi, first to uh, give the introduction and also to others uh, organizers. I am not mentioning all the names as the time will be short. And I hope the conference will give some uh, light to our daily life as my speech is uh, you have to select it that just one minute i share the screen Okay, you can see my screen. My screen can be viewed. My screen okay. Hello. Okay, we can. Okay. Yes, we can see clearly. Okay, thank you. So, I am uh, today talking about the research innovations in the COVID-19 pandemic in Malaysia aspect. Actually, this research and innovation is overall in our daily life. From daily morning to evening, we do research in our daily life. Morning, we wake up and go for brushing. We think which toothpaste is more tastier. So we think it is a pepper meant taste or normal taste or gel or powder which toothpaste we are using for brushing our teeth so we do a extensive research and there are different types of toothpaste come up in the market so there is a means adherence and the correlation between everyday life our daily need and research it is not that research always we think that, okay, we sit on the lab and do some experiments. Like we do ELISA, we do some HPLC, we do some testing, not like that. It is in our daily life. So on this aspect, 
I am going to present a different perspective of research area. In our, as per the organization of our economic cooperation and development, there is a manual for research. And on this research aspect, there is two major things. A classification is there. That is one is field of research, that which field the research should be there. It is scientific or academic discipline and like that economic development or in by laboratory development, educational development. So which is the, what is the field of research? Next is socioeconomic objective. So what is the effect of economics and social, environmental and technological and scientific domain? So in these two aspects, we use for our research and development. So in this research and development, there are different boundaries in which we are talking about and we are working on different aspects of research and development in our day-to-day -day life and also in the research field. So first is education, training and personal training of personnel of students. So here in, we know that postgraduate research as a PhD or anything research master degree level research is considered as a research in the field. So new teaching methods have been coming up for this COVID-19. As you see this conference we are doing online. Previously, we don't think about this online conference. We think only we gather together, we go, we talk, we meet with each other, we exchange our idea, we present some poster or, and then take food and take some tour, then we go back. So, but the new, in this aspect, COVID-19 situation, we have coming up with online conference. Same thing in teaching methods also, we are doing research. Like we do online classes in Malaysia now. In Malaysia, all the university is not allowed to take uh, school and university stop for taking class. Online teaching only allowed at present. So you have heard that Zoom platform like we are using now. Some days before, there is a insecurity or reasons for Zoom not to use like that many things come up. But as the things come up, they also increase their security reasons and the Zoom platform is okay, we are using now. So we don't know what will happen next, later on, but at present we have come up, the software developers come up with a new idea and they make more secure platform. So now we are using this Zoom, YouTube, Facebook Live, etc. by a secure way. So these are the online system and class support method where we are using, even we are using Edmado, we are using for uh, primary school, we are using class dojo in the Malaysian schools. So every day the school uh, university classes going on through online platform only. So this is a part of research. It is not that we just uh, simply come up with a new idea. We are, it is a continuous process of research. So which platform is better, WebEx, Zoom, there we have to work and we are working on. Now there is specialized scientific and technical information services. So which is related to scientific data collection, that data should be coded, recorded, classified properly, and that data should be analyzed with the help of references. So these are the total research area, like we are doing PhD and et cetera. We can think that data collection, then we do statistical analysis, we do results analysis and the result and references. The same thing in the research also, everything should be based on data collection. Suppose I am giving an example that this coronavirus from where it is spread, we don't aware about this in last year. When we do conference in collaboration with Unimus in our Malaysia in September, we are totally unaware about this COVID. 
we don't know at all in march also we do conference we are not so much uh, afraid and we don't think about that thing these things could be happen in our daily life so it is first started in around november 2019 from china and malaysia it is first report in january only only two persons was affected in january and suddenly it increased so this is the data we found that where it the generation the virus generate from where the virus spreading we found that it is spreading from china one origin then come to singapore then from singapore to other places from china to other places directly or indirectly it is spreading so this is the data source by viewing and analyzing the data we understand the source of the virus and how we can break the chain here so we are totally uh, this uh, data is totally monitored every day in our uh, ministry level ministry of Edu health ministry of education science everybody is working on this data this data is yesterday's data you can see there is a total differentiation they have calculating where it is in saba how many it is in this state negative sample and how much selangor state how much in kuala lumpur state how much so all this statistically they are defining so we can easily identify which state from where the disease is still there and it can be spread from where but until and unless the it is now lockdown condition so no foreigner coming in no flight going out means officially so whichever is coming in we are making means the government making quarter nine so the person cannot move out before 14 days they are strictly under monitor like that but uh, when it is opening then we have to again more careful of course suppose singapore before opening they have only 2000 case after opening in march it go to 20000 above at present data i have not seen also because i am afraid to see the data so it is before 2000 now 20000 a small country singapore indonesia also in very difficult condition the infection rate is very high uh, because this is a uh, what you call the um, control of the disease and the population and how they are monitoring awareness among the person so what i am going to tell is just previously i told the data analyzed so this data is analyzed in our ministry level daily and you can see how they are monitoring it i am just showing you you can see this uh, twitter data it is from twitter they are every day they are placing these different types of data in twitter all the data can be available every day day to day basis every hour maybe or every 5 or 6 hour they are posting something in the twitter so how they are generating by analyzing the data clear so the health persons only like we are supporting in hospitals etc the data is collected analyzed then put in the system and now it is in twitter or facebook or the social media to aware the people what is the present scenario now so there is a the routine data collection is there and maintenance of national standard is also there the standard how we can monitor etc now on this context one paper have been published and this paper is uh, survey, means survey based so it is the question was asked around few means a group of people that whether or not they are agreed that covid 19 situation would be successfully controlled or not second question whether they thought malaysia would be able to win it battle against the virus or not then third question is whether they thought that malaysian government was handling the health crisis well or not of course different persons have different uh, perspective and perception on their own 
uh, knowledge and own thinking so they are giving different types of view so we can found that 4000 people agreed that it can be successfully controlled okay and only 600 or 700 people told not sure a hundred of the people told no it cannot be controlled next is how it is confident that malaysia can win around maximum people told yes we will win the scenario so here and the government of malaysia handling properly yes many people is uh, agreed because the government here they give more power to the director general of health he is a dead doctor in profession medical doctor so dr hisham so he is uh, controlling the monitoring the system every day and even all the measures the government taking for the betterment of the public so this paper has been published in may 21 in plos journal so public knowledge attitude and practices towards covid 19 a cross sectional study in malaysia so in this type of research also can be done in indonesia and other countries as well so we can find out that how the government action can be monitored and can be improved it is not that we are analyzing and we keep in under our pillow we analyze the data we understand the difficult deficiency of our system and we can implement that research in our daily life so that our life is more easy not difficult that we cannot go out from home and it is part that long uh, extending and extending so now we can see that what is the feasibility of studies so that also have to be taken in mind that we do the conduct the survey where is this survey is feasible or or this study can be feasible or not we do we telling that okay we do random checking is it feasible how much population we have maybe in malaysia it is very uh, few population and all can spend the money to get tested for covid but suppose in indonesia or more lower economic countries where they, they have the money they don't have the money and the don't population have the money and the population population also very big so population. how they can do this study is not feasible so much that type of study means if we do covid test in every persons level okay now so there is specialized medical care should be there and that specialized medical care we are in malaysia they are doing with the help of the hospitals and they have specified okay this sungai bulo hospital government hospital specialty hospital is totally for covid i la last uh, 15 days ago one of our staff i sent for dengue in sungai bulo specialist because i believe that is the best one of the best hospital in our selanga state uh, super specialty hospital so when they go to emergency they told no he, as it is not covid we not taking it here you go to selang hospital so refer to other public uh, government hospital which is not treating covid patients only so already specified that this hospital is specified for covid we they not allowing any other cases to go in and when that person go to selang hospital they tested and found negative they tell we cannot take admission of you because the beds are limited for dengue if it is positive then we can take as you are not positive go back after two days you come if you are not well but in the evening he get deteriorated he started diarrhea so he have to be shifted in other private hospital so but the thing is that the system system is telling that this is specific specialized medical center for covid now this type of treatment Which we have in malaysia they have started the drive through in many places in roads they have started and in many clinic and hospitals they have started this drive through testing the person sitting in car they take the swab the machines are there they testing immediately and in some 
condominium also many of you have come to our university college in front of our university there is a apart new apartment beside the giant maybe you have seen beside the giant there is a new apartment and anybody coming and going want to enter that apartment need to have test but what is the feasibility we don't know because everybody may not have the money to spend to do the test so any person may not go inside okay we don't go in but in this way they are trying to control it is not that one time test you find positive many case is become non positive or non detected so around suppose 10% case only become detected but rest 90% is non detected so that 90% spread means case is moving around us and that is not so means not so serious stage that only maybe they are feeling some so throat some little fever or may not feel anything also so 80% case is recovered at home level and within that 20% who is showing the uh, disease symptom they are admitted to hospital and within that only very few whose immunity is very less and who cannot withstand and the affected or affection i mean the disease affected ness is more they are not with us they have to die it is normal case in any disease like dengue also in malaria also in other cases also that everybody not dying only very few person come positive test and on on that also very few person is dying but in this case as the disease is very highly spreadable highly infectious for that that is the main concern for us that we cannot uh, control the disease so easily like malaria or dengue we know it is vector borne a mosquito is the source so we can catch the source we can keep uh, we can take prevention against the mosquito only but here the source is air one person i don't know that he have the covid or not he is speaking with me i got infected like a smoking one person smoking i uh, inhale the smoke means it is a uh, what you call passive smoking passive smoker like that i am getting infected without knowing anything so that is the main cause of this disease now all of you know about that thing so i don't have to tell so much things on this actually uh, there are other factors in research clinical trial we all know and there is phase is phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 for the clinical trials like any vaccine we have to develop we have to do clinical trial but as we know it is a uh, the virus is total have around 8 to 10 variety already and very much rna virus so it is very unstable form and it is very changeable form so the vaccine is not so easy like same as dengue still so many years we cannot develop a vaccine cancer we have we cannot develop a medicine we are trying we are doing clinical trial we are doing research in every aspect medicine genomics proteomics every aspect even nutrition in our daily life but we failed to develop a single medicine against cancer it is a bunch of different types of disease causing cancer same thing there is a bunch of different types of strain this covid was previously present also but this variety is covid 19 2019 it developed so this variety is so much spreadable uh, we cannot imagine previously now there is 10 variety and 10 variety we cannot develop a single vaccine so easily it needs clinical trial and also time these things all under research we if we can develop okay if we means we can develop or not that is we don't i also don't know and we don't know also we are trying so if a new drug discovered today it can be patented or it can be licensed and they will get a big award of course so in this aspect malaysia also come up 
to with the world health organization and told yes we will have the testing clinical trial test we will allow our patients to who module means the drugs whatever they are prescribing we will do the clinical study here so as per the who in this one is in april i think april 5th that the news come up so as per the who that time told hydroxychloroquine is effective against the prevention of this disease so everybody is buying and searching where is that medicine can be available so from that country they are importing like our us president also import this hydroxychloroquine from india as he told also that i don't know that what to use of this hydroxychloroquine it is to eat or it is to uh, see i don't know as the doctor told as the scientist told i ordered and bring the hydroxychloroquine but this hydroxychloroquine and recent study in last uh, 15 days ago lancet journal mentioned that who ever having high but uh, breathing trouble there is adverse effect of hydroxychloroquine so hydroxychloroquine cannot be prescribed for all the patients so who told hydroxychloroquine cannot be used for all patients of covid already a new idea have been developed so there is a perception we think that yes hydroxychloroquine can be effective then we tried on the patient sample we failed means we failed not failed means we think that okay this some cases patients not repros- uh, responding and the disease is more causing more harm with this drug so we discard the idea to use the hydroxychloroquine abruptly in all patients that i go and shop i buy and take no like it is not a panadol or some paracetamol like that okay i have fever i go and take paracetamol we will be the fever will be less little bit it is not like that hydroxychloroquine cannot be taken by everybody it like the antibiotic i cannot tell all antibiotic okay everybody will take the same antibiotic in shop so same way this clinical trial has been implemented in malaysia and the first patients also in april 22nd you can see that april first they have started and april also they have find cure with the trial so what are the different aspects of trial they have made you can search and we can check detail that is i am not discussing it here so that is a research so but it is not as as i told it is not clinical trial and it is not uh, sure that this trial patient is same medicine will affected to same uh, recovery rate in other another patient it is a trial and not uh, proved yet that all patients with all variety strain of covid can be cured with this trial it is a case study clear next is uh, as we are in lockdown condition we develop different types of food habit we are uh, we cannot go to restaurant we are ordering food online it is not that we are ordering there are many persons of old age who cannot go out who cannot cook by themselves so they have to order their food for daily to daily means for they cannot go to market they cannot go for medicine to buy so they have to be stay in the home and order the food to food panda grab etc it is not that we are ordering kfc every day for taking our delicacy it is a daily need that that old person cannot go out how he will eat he cannot go for marketing he cannot cook himself so he has to order the food from this persons but what will happen this persons is this persons are safe so there is a research area so in this research context that when we find that this persons are also front liner as doctor nurse this cleaner grab food driver food panda driver all are front liner of this covid fight so there is a university here they are giving free vaccination to the university malaya 
we, they, they are giving the free vaccination of influenza vaccination to these Grab or Food Panda drivers. So this is the research that, okay, why they have to work? We can tell, yes, you don't have to go out, Food Panda, stop. No, we cannot do that. Malaysian government allowed. Yes, Food Panda have to serve, they have to serve online, the postman should serve, the cleaner should serve, and when they analyze, yes, these are the frontliner. So they have to be vaccinated with influenza virus, at least to try that influenza vaccination to be given. Like that, they are working. So this is also a research output. Now, also there is a uh, different types of view that less sleep is leading to, uh, means more prone to COVID. Why? Of course, nah, because less sleep, less immunity, causing to more prone to any disease, not only COVID. So there should be a policy from here, all the study we make, we come up with the policies. Okay, lock down the country. Don't allow other persons to go in. Like this type of policy, we are going to implement and find out. So what are the policies? Suppose one policy I'm just telling, Malaysian government is now relieving the movement control order stage by stage. The last week was uh, Hari Raya, Eid, Eid festival. So they have lifted the movement control order. They told, yes, one state to another state, you can move. You can do small gathering of 20% only, not more than that. In restaurant, you can go. You can dine in together, but you have to keep two meter distance from each table. You can go for swimming. You cannot go for swimming, but you can play tennis. You cannot play football. You can play tennis, long tennis, because the distance. You cannot go for school. You have to go for online class. So there are different categories. They have specified each and every category. How? This is the policy output of the research. Total research they have done. They have found, yes, other country, how it is increasing. Increasing through the population, they are gathering. So in this Eid, the Sultan of this state told, no, mosque door will not open. You do your prayer at home. We don't want the spreading of disease at the community level. So mosque gate not open. Same temple gate not open, church gate not open. All that um, temple and worship step closed. They are doing prayer inside. The priest pray, praying means inside the mosque. The ajan is can be heard, but the people cannot go inside the mosque. So this is a preventive measure. Not that every uh, objecting anybody, anything or something. How this policy come up? This policy come up from the history and data analysis of all the matters. Now, suppose this COVID in this Mosti, Malaysian uh, Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation, they come up with the vaccine development collaboration with other countries, South Korea, UK, uh, Bosnia, and all these countries are trying to make a collaborative effort to form a vaccine. We don't know it can be happen or not, but they're collaborating. This is a policy also from the government, Ministry of Science and Technology. Then also uh, they are thinking which subject means which area to more gear up. Like they are thinking that yes, we have to give the technological support. So the technological skill startup of the social working should be more. So they are generating fund and give the fund shifting to that side. So as we know, the so, education sector in private universities is in stress condition also because the economic recession, uh, they cannot, the student cannot afford the fees because many uh, parents cannot uh, have the money, etc. So they are thinking to bring the student, foreign student, how to bring the foreign student, 
also like indonesian students or other country student want to come for higher study also they cannot come because there is a issue that uh, covid can happen to them or us we don't know so that is a policy they are thinking and maybe they will come up with some sorts of uh, what do you call solution they already come up they told after arrival you have to stay 14 days quarter nine then only come to university for your research work now there is type of activity there are two types three types of research we know basic research applied research and experimental development as i told basic research is in laboratories that we are doing the test developing the vaccine or testing anything microscope that it is in my, the malaria parasite is there how much is that total count these are all basic research applied research this is the applied research when i found the data how i can implement on the society and then experimental development so i have to develop ppe kit power up the body how the ppe kit can be more easier and more this is the experimental development how we can implement in the daily life so there is a focus point like uh, one of the ministry have been given that i can show you this one more this is the ministry of home affairs they have given this job to uh, one of the university so what they are telling that <clears throat> so there is a industry linkage and they are doing the what is the implementation how the stability perception of mco effectiveness of mco etc they are checking so this is a part of research this is started last uh, in june only so this is the current evaluation and this should be this uh, study they are given target that within june you give the report that what is the input and how the government will make the new policies about this implementation of research then there is different types of research as i told you pure strategic applied and experimental development i uh, many of you have come to malaysia you know the previous airport condition is like this many people are moving around but the now the condition is like this no people is working and it is empty loop <coughs> sorry the tourist places many of you have seen so many crowded so now it is no play no person is working it is not only uh, it is a picture of batu cave you know then other places also genting highland langkawi cameroon highland penang island so many places in malaysia queen tower all is empty so this is a very bad condition of economy and this mco in may uh, this is the may data more than 600000 people is jobless so unemployment rate go up so this is a very bad condition for economy and this economy while recession is causing depression in our daily life and this is called black dog symptom we don't know we are continuously going under depression every day because our normal life is hampered we cannot go out we cannot mix with friends we are thinking that oh every day um, so many person dying we so many persons are uh, what you call affected by covid we cannot mix uh, easily we have to be very careful like this type of thinking when i think we become depressed and we cannot go out from this depression so like that i am just telling that i have stopped to see the data of increasing the covid so we don't see the data i don't see the data now previously every day i see in the morning afternoon what is the data every day this country going up spain going up uk going up china going down like a competition going on who is the first how many person is dying in covid how many person is infected in covid so that that data is causing a silent depression in our mind 
so we stop that data seeing what to see we see how much recovery we are getting how other countries how they are preventing this causing of data means increasing of this disease spreading of this disease now malaysia every day there was previously i told in january it is two case after that every day it is more than 100 case infected now it is below 50 every day below 20 like that cases now how because the public awareness i just come with uh, that one you can see this public awareness this is in march 16 when the mco has been implemented fast lockdown government told okay we are going to lockdown everybody jump in the supermarket sco hero market every rack is empty like this you can see total empty no egg in a fridge if you open nothing all for the uh, french fry etc ice cream everything vacant so panic everybody panic and everybody crowded on the shop but now they understand and they do a social distancing measure all stock have every rack have egg every fridge have the matters you can see when they entering they are checking temperature they are making social distancing distancing they have now implemented barcode if i go to kesco i have to scan my mobile with the code and that code will tell me that yes it is recorded in ministry of uh, health data and what is the temperature of that place i am entering and they are checking my temperature so if anything already detected that where is the source how we can prevent everybody wearing mask you can see it is not casual oh so my, no 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 problem i go together i go no everybody is maintaining now government told sultan told no don't go to the mosque no nobody go they pray from their home they understand that yes this is the way we can prevent the disease so this understanding and this awareness should be there in our daily life and this is the outcome of the research now in this uh, uh, scenario i just want to tell just yes, this is a covid 19 <coughs> research fact sheet so here you can see research fact sheet in this website so fact sheet uh, one it is done by the academy of science malaysia fact sheet one is understanding the stability of corona virus so everybody should be aware where and how the stability of this virus is there next is diagnostic interpretation how we can diagnose through normal test and through pcr etc they are also they have done very uh, good system but in highly populated country like india etc very difficult to do implement that system they cannot implement in bangladesh india sri lanka no in malaysia it is okay because if somebody have fever the person from the hospital come and checking the blood sample taking the blood sample to home, the center they don't take the patient at first they test then again after two days again come take the swab if not found if fever is still there they take the patient to hospital test respiratory index etc then they leave on antibiotic etc not that okay tested one time negative go you queue in uh, hospital no they don't allow the patient to go to hospital patient stay at home they come to patient and take the sample go test and give the report that is not possible for every country we have to think that one also that is research aspect that how we can implement in highly populated country how we can implement in indonesia how we can implement this in india cannot this is totally different now this is the clinical characteristics then clinical trials as i told then characteristic of the covid patient what are the characteristic of the patient can develop then epidemiology of the outbreak how we can uh, control and how 
we can monitor this disease. So I think I have uh, taken a much longer time with, uh, from my specific time. So this one actually told by Dr. Professor Victor. I just want to share. Professor Victor was uh, in World War time. He was present in with the what do you call? He was present. Uh, he was a prisoner. In the prison, he write the book, Man's Search for Living. He developed an idea of what do you call? <clears throat> Means why the man is living. Why the man want to live? Because he see when the persons was present in World War time, they are dying. Their family members dying there inside in front of them. They don't have food. They're taking only one cup of soup every day. One side, there is a small hole, wind coming. Another pass is a small stair, the wind going out. Whole room is like that. So many person. One dead body is here. Frame means family members cannot take out. When after a few day, one day, they want to take out, leg come out from the body. Total horrible condition. But Victor was there. His friend told that, okay, Victor, I get a dream that 31st March I will be relieved. So he was very happy on first week of March. So second week March, very happy. Yes, I am leaving, going to leave. They are taking, leaving me from the prison. But on 26th March, he think, he found that he cannot go out from this prison. It is the only dream. So 27th March, he deteriorated. 20th, 30th March, he cannot move. He lying down. And 31st March, he expired. Because his perception was there that I will be relieved. But he is totally depressed. And that depression caused him death. If he has think, no, I can be relieved. Like Victor, he was writing a book. He think, no, whatever is going on, I am writing. So what is the condition you know? They cannot, maybe you have, some of you read that book. They cannot move. They cannot move six inch step. Staircase also cannot climb because they are so weak when they are relieved. Because they are only getting soup and typhoid also there. They are dying. Cannot take food also. One person dying with typhoid in the same room. So that is a total scenario and the thinking that how he lived on that scenario. So what he is told, when we are no longer able to change the situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Very important thing that when we cannot change this COVID, we understand that not COVID only, suppose volcano eruption in last year in Indonesia or California fire or oil spill in sea. These or the earthquake. These are not in our hand. We cannot change this situation. But we have to, we are challenged to change ourselves. We have to, we cannot now uh, go to the shop and do shopping like this. We have to change our mindset. We have to shop like this, not like uh, go and do shopping like that way. We not, cannot go for gathering. We have to do online. We have to do maintain social distancing. We have to use every aspect in the thing. So in this context, I just want to share that there are many things, uh, what you call our Ministry of Education, Ministry of, uh, this is Pusat Shitasi, as I told, not told, means they are also coming up in their website, etc. There are different types of online programs of SVR, etc. Uh, EBS Co, that these are the Skyvel, Zoom meetings. So they are offering, means giving the information freely and the persons who are interested, they can log in, register and go into the webinar series. Like these are the many web series are website available in there, make available to the researchers to think and to share their views. There are many uh, international uh, matters also means society also there like mental health association they have their own website 
how we can prevent means gear up the mental health of the pay, uh, persons <clears throat> that also can be seen means uh, we can implement in our daily life so with this i should tell that we are struggling for existence as charles darwin told and there is a survival of the fittest of course who is the fit they will survive if human not fit human have to go out like dinosaur not fit they go out human if not fit they have to go out if human cannot breed normal delivery if they have to go for assisted delivery in future means the species going to extinct so there who is determining this this is determined by nature there is no not in our hand we are just playing our roles it is all controlled by nature and thank you for giving me the opportunity any questions from the yes. next, uh, panel member and comments okay. welcome okay thank you dr paler for your such an interesting presentation so that was the presentation from dr santi paler but uh, before we continue our second presentation we shall see at a glance of nursing school of universitas muhammadiyah smarang in a short video During the presentation, we will come here to give the questions for the speakers by connecting the question in question and answer room chat, and we will read the questions later in the discussion session. Honorable uh, Rector 
University of Muhammadiyah Semarang, uh, Professor Masuki, Minister of uh, Education, the Honorable of Dean of Faculty of uh, Nursing and Higher Sciences, Dr. Uh, Ali Rosiri, and then the Honorable Faculty of uh, Vice Dean of uh, Faculty of Nursing and Herbal uh, Nursing Master Program, Dr. Siti Yosifianti Bohan. Miss, then, miss uh, the speak honorable. louder, Miss. Yes. Okay, louder okay. Speak. I will speak louder. Okay. Ah, louder. Okay. okay. Uh, the honorable speaker from uh, Lincoln University, Dr. Sandy Bodal, and uh, committed and participant in this webinar. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thanks to uh, God. Uh, let us together give thanks to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his blessing and gift. So this until this moment, we are still blessed with uh, full happiness. Uh, we can together and healthy, safety, and can attend a today webinar event, even though uh, in our office and home. And our uh, blessing... Uh, Greetings, so always be praised to great Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace be upon him because he is our role model in morality and perfecting teaching of Islam. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I will uh, present uh, and share about uh, material today about education and clinical uh, teaching education. Okay, let me share. Okay, while we prepare her presentation, I would like to explain the topic that will be presented by Buino is about clinical tutorial and assessment. Okay, Buino will be present about clinical tutorial and assessment, clinical teaching during COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, we can see your PowerPoint presentation there. Buino, please continue your presentation. Okay. Um... So it's a uh, clinical education is very important to us. So especially in uh, pandemic COVID. So we have to uh, change our uh, how to a uh, clinical tutorial. So uh, this is uh, the objective uh, that I will I will speak with the two languages, with uh, English language and then uh, Indonesian language to. Uh, easy uh, to the participant. Uh, the objective is uh, to share clinical tutorial and education in COVID-19 pandemic before and after. And the second uh, objective is assessment innovation in COVID-19 pandemic. And then the process uh, to implementing the program and then the uh, challenge and the real action. Jadi di dalam tujuan uh, dalam uh, webinar hari ini adalah untuk mengetahui bagaimana sih kita inovasi uh, tutorial klinisnya, kemudian bagaimana inovasi untuk uh, penilaian di dalam profesi, kemudian juga proses implementasi, dan bagaimana refleksinya. Nah, uh, and then the, uh, almost to half a month Indonesia in the beginning of March, we need adaptation. We need. Can I interrupt? Okay. Will you, can I interrupt? Yes. 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 Oh, would you please make the presentation in the slideshow so okay. the, the audience will see it clearly? Okay. Is it okay? Ah, yeah. It's, it's much better. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. You're welcome. And to have a moment, to help moms, uh, we have a need uh, adaptation because we have a lack experience and a knowledge about the online, uh, online or uh, uh, system. So that we have to know that a pandemic is a very, very uh, change our life. So all activities. Uh, Everyone is into online system like uh, study from home 
or work from home and our learning has to conduct it from home. So we need innovation because uh, you know that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nadi Makarim said that we have to innovate uh, that make our students a much better understanding. Jadi uh, dalam waktu dua bulan kita memang butuh adaptasi yang luar biasa karena memang uh, karena uh, pengalaman yang kurang di dalam uh, apa pembelajaran uh, daring dan uh, semua kegiatan dalam dua bulan setengah ini mulai awal Maret kita lakukan itu uh, uh, dalam sistem online semua semua pembelajaran harus dilakukan dari rumah dan uh, itu sangat uh, membutuhkan inovasi dan Uh, itulah yang uh, penting kita lakukan hari ini supaya kita bisa menciptakan lingkungan yang uh, baik untuk uh, pembelajaran. We have to uh, create a safe environment for learning and personal growth. Learn. Uh, the first is uh, safety is paramount. Communication and transparency is the key. And then we have to uh, flexibility uh, needed from all stakeholders. Uh, in university and at uh, a hospital and technology can help but uh, be realistic but uh, uh, maybe the internet is very slow and then a student or even a lecturer don't understand what about the IP and then the fourth uh, knowledge is the need of physiological adaptation teaching and crisis we know we have a uh, uh, we have and our home is about a uh, two months to have a month and Uh, we feel as uh, we want to go out, but we can't. So that's a make a, a psychological adaptation is a change. And the fifth is step into the wisdom and collegiality of the community. Jadi kita memang harus menciptakan lingkungan yang aman untuk pembelajaran dan uh, untuk perkembangan ataupun untuk peningkatan diri. Yang pertama memang keselamatan itu memang paling penting yang dan terpenting. Dan kemudian kita juga harus menyiapkan komunikasi yang baik melalui tentu saja melalui daring apakah itu um, melalui med, apa medsos kemudian juga um, melalui email melalui zoom seperti ini ya dan kemudian kita juga harus uh, flexible terhadap semua uh, stakeholder yang ada di di dalam uh, proses pembelajaran kemudian uh, teknologi itu juga bisa membantu tapi kita juga harus realistik karena tidak semuanya memahami teknologi Uh, apakah itu mahasiswa atau ataukah itu tendik ataukah mem, apa mungkin juga uh, dosen dosen juga uh, perlu belajar tentang IT kembali kemudian yang keempat adalah memang perlu adaptasi psikologi terhadap uh, perubahan yang memang kita harus dibentuk di rumah uh, uh, untuk uh, jarang keluar kemudian uh, yang kelima kita juga harus paham bahwa uh, dalam masuki uh, new normal seperti ini ya memang butuh support uh, dari berbagai pihak. Nah, uh, I think it uh, before COVID-19, it's uh, very normal and we can interact with each other. And I think uh, we miss all this moment. Everyone uh, miss all the moment. We can uh, uh, interact the, to our people. Jadi memang sebelum COVID-19 uh, ini, sangat menyenangkan sekali kita bisa Uh, apa uh, bertemu dengan orang-orang berinteraksi dengan orang-orang dan sangat uh, mudah sekali kita bisa membantu satu sama lain tapi ketika uh, setelah covid nanti akan uh, banyak membuat perubahan pada diri kita no uh, after covid 19 uh, optional clinical education is open virtual class all of is open virtual class because our university have a uh, Uh, some regulation that uh, we have uh, uh, have uh, teach by a virtual class, even a lectures, even a assessment, even a, a clinical education, uh, it's all in a virtual class. Uh, and our university uh, have a regulation of a virtual class until 29 June. Jadi setelah COVID-19 ini ada kebijakan dari uh, Universitas Muhammadiyah Semarang itu kita juga memberikan uh, open virtual class 
mulai dari awal Maret sampai besok 29 Juni dan nanti kalau memang ada kebijakan lagi apakah diperpanjang tidak akan dilakukan kembali. Uh, this is our our um, e-learning, ya. Yeah. Ini contoh Lina yang dipakai di keperawatan Unimus, uh, baik profesi maupun akademik. We use uh, e-learning for uh, profession education since uh, 2017, but uh, in uh, academic academic education and bachelor and graduate, uh, uh, we use We use e-learning is uh, the beginning of 2000. Uh, it's, it's very long time, and it's very easy and it's very powerless. Everyone can uh, share uh, the juicy, and every everyone can uh, do the uh, uh, the assignment to the e-learning. It's very easy, and it is a uh, Some research in online nursing education, yeah, the challenge on online education, some research that we can uh, talk about it more. This is the second uh, research in online nursing education. And then we we know that uh, we become a clinical teacher. It's uh, not easy. So we have to have a high motivation to be an excellent clinical teacher. Uh, excellent clinical teacher is how this uh, interest is to teaching and learning. And if they are not interested in teaching and learning, uh, they can uh, transfer their knowledge uh, better than that who have uh, motivation. So this is very important, the, the, the first one. And they spend time with learner explain things and answer questions, even though that uh, some of uh, clinical teachers have little time. So uh, we, we have give, uh, spend time learner, even uh, it's very limited time. They are well organized and prepared to have learners in their clinical setting. And then they are facilitate the student learning and focus on the student clinical reasoning skills. Jadi memang menjadi uh, clinical teacher yang excellent itu sangat uh, tidak mudah. Kenapa? Karena yang pertama harus ada motivasi secara uh, tersendiri atau khusus uh, bagaimana uh, dia tertarik tidak untuk mengajar seseorang. Jadi yang pertama adalah tertarik dalam mengajar dan belajar, kemudian Uh, menghabiskan waktu bersama mahasiswa, ya, ya menjelaskan, menjawab pertanyaan, walaupun memang waktunya sangat terbatas. Kemudian memang uh, sebagai clinical teacher yang baik, yang memang harus dipersiapkan dengan baik di dalam clinical setting yang memang sudah dipersiapkan uh, dalam rotasi uh, profesi. Terus juga memfasilitasi uh, mahasiswa untuk belajar, terutama pada penalaran klinis jadi reason, reasoning skills yang itu yang nanti akan uh, dipelajari. Nah, uh, then uh, adaptation teaching and learning method that uh, we know that um, we have a many method of teaching learning that we use in uh, profession education like uh, uh, bedside teaching, yeah that. We, uh, And we combine with side teaching and clinical tutorial, and then we adapt this and about uh, method exam like uh, 360 degree, like mini CX, DOPS, uh, case reflection, uh, student oral case analysis, and then we have to uh, routine monitoring by coordinator of study program or station. Uh, and then a clinical deficiency after COVID-19 and involvement with the field of work. Jadi ada beberapa adaptasi yang perlu kita lakukan dalam uh, selama pandemi ini, yaitu dari adaptasi metodenya yang nanti saya akan jelaskan adalah tentang metode clinical tutorial. Kemudian adaptasi dalam uh, method of exam. Jadi ada beberapa yang bisa kita modifikasi untuk Bagaimana asesmennya? Kemudian uh, perlu uh, monitoring yang teratur oleh koordinator, jadi akan lebih bagus lagi. It's more uh, uh, 
uh, important that we have to uh, routine monitor because it's, it's very difficult. Jadi sangat penting sekali kalau kita memang uh, monitor secara rutin apakah memang COVID testnya tercapai atau tidak selama fase tersebut. And then a clinical deficiency after COVID-19. Jadi setelah uh, selesai pandemi ini, kita perlu tata ulang kembali. Kira-kira uh, di fase mana yang kurang untuk uh, capaian pembelajarannya dan bisa kita redesign kembali supaya nanti pada saat uh, uh, mahasiswa bisa masuk ke rumah sakit, uh, bisa terlibat di rumah sakit, nah ini nanti kita uh, berikan kompetensi atau keterampilan yang mana yang memang perlu uh, dilakukan kembali. Uh, then, then the field, uh, informal with the field of work. Jadi artinya bahwa sebetulnya ada uh, ada yang menarik uh, tawaran-tawaran terkait dengan uh, relawan ya, relawan COVID uh, itu bisa digunakan atau dilakukan sebagai pengganti di dalam uh, apa uh, proses pembelajaran dan uh, terutama beberapa mahasiswa uh, yang ekstensi yang bisa bekerja. Jadi mereka bisa tetap bekerja dan belajar dan menggunakan uh, saat mereka praktek di saat bekerja tersebut. Jadi involved with the field of work. And then uh, now we, uh, I will uh, tell you about adaptation clinical tutorial. Uh, clinical tutorial in us is a combined uh, between um, this uh, cycle examination patient examination and discussion. And then beside teaching is uh, have a second, uh, step second uh, determination of clinical case, a uh, case that will be, be used as a beside teaching material, uh, mainly cases in the treatment room. So that follow up can be done. Case selection with agreed between a preceptor and the corners. Jadi di dalam uh, clinical tutorial yang kita gunakan itu kombinasi antara bedside teaching dan diskusi. Dan di mana di bedside teaching ini, uh, jadi uh, mahasiswa ini nanti bisa didampingi untuk uh, proses pembelajaran bedside teaching. Dan nanti akan kita lihat di situ kasusnya itu biasanya disepakati antara preceptor dan co uh, nurse yang akan ada di dalam uh, Bedside teaching. Nah di dalam bedside teaching itu sendiri itu proses pembelajarannya bisa pakai five minute presentorship. Jadi ada pakai five minute presentorship di dalam bedside teaching sehingga nanti proses bedside teaching akan berjalan dengan baik. So now we the next step. Uh, step one that uh, we use and uh, clinical tutorial, uh, patient examination and then uh, Performing uh, students can perform in front of the preceptor or not, and we can history taking and physical examination, and then uh, the preceptor give a feedback to the student, and this feedback can be delayed in discussion. And COVID pandemic as preceptor, we can give a feedback or for video to the uh, this, uh, by Zoom or uh, Google Meet or WhatsApp uh, group that uh, uh, make us uh, easy uh, like this one. And then uh, the step two, uh, we can discuss them one, it's analog with a step uh, five to uh, one to five PBL, uh, perform independently, uh, or uh, with uh, the preceptor and then discuss case analysis column uh, one to five uh, possible to uh, feedback. Uh, dalam step yang kedua ini, diskusinya sama seperti di diskusi PBL, uh, seven jam step itu, step satu sampai lima. Nah, dalam step yang kedua ini bisa didampingi oleh preceptor bisa juga uh, dilakukan mandiri oleh mahasiswa. Dan diskusinya uh, tentu saja apa yang dia lakukan pada saat bedside teaching, kemudian uh, nanti akan mengisi kolom-kolom yang akan saya jelaskan lebih lanjut. Nah, di dalam uh, 
uh, step yang kedua ini mahasiswa tidak perlu membawa buku sehingga apa yang mereka lakukan apa yang mereka dapat untuk diskusi ya sesuai dengan pengetahuan mereka selama proses diskusi uh, and then uh, we have to the uh, independent learning it's not a, a part of a step a tool Independent learning is analog to step six PBL. It's a literature review, research theory. A uh, student can uh, 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 search about a journal, search about evidence nursing, or discuss with a clinical clinical teacher, or discuss with the community scientific session, or even discuss with a doctor. So that uh, uh, the independent learning that uh, student have to search everything jika uh, jadi mahasiswa bisa uh, mencari literatur review terkait dengan pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang sudah dilakukan atau dibuat pada saat di pertemuan yang pertama. Tadi di setelah pertemuan pertama uh, atau step two tadi. Ini nanti kemudian kita buat independent learning, and then the step three of discussion two, analog to step seven PBL reporting with the preceptor, and then uh, we discuss case analysis uh, with a uh, six and seven table, and then give formal uh, presentation in the step three. So and then uh, di dalam diskusi yang kedua atau step yang ketiga ini ini sama persis seperti reporting jadi analog to step 7 PBL jadi nanti akan bertemu dengan uh, reseptor uh, mendiskusikan uh, hasil temuan mereka hasil jawaban pertanyaannya kemudian memberikan uh, formal presentasi uh, this is the case analysis this is seven table This table, uh, the first uh, the first column until the five column is uh, the discussion one, and then learning issue and problem solving is uh, the uh, second discussion. Jadi untuk pertemuan pertama ini mulai dari kolom 1 sampai 5 kemudian kol ke pertemuan yang kedua ini adalah uh, Pertemuan kedua ini menjawab pertanyaan atau reporting di kolom 6 dan ke-7. And then, what adaptation assessment? We have example of assessment. Uh, when a normal time before pandemic, we have a mini check, mini clinical evaluation exercise. We have a clinical and concert card. We have a clinical work sampling. We have a blended uh, patient and counter. We have a DOPS or direct optional procedural skill, case discussion, and multi-source feedback. Uh, now, I, I will tell you about uh, a plan by plan and counters that we have uh, do. That a student can in group, it's a four or five students participate with the tutorial and start uh, with a pair direct observation in one student and the group is observe performing adaptation and then we can use a video to observe of course we have a we can use good video uh, we can make a good a video good scenario to observe and then uh, the student can see the video then thereafter the student is uh, provide diagnosis intervention based on clinical finding in this video that the Patient is unknown to the student. They they don't know about the, the patient. So after after presentation by student, the session focus on the important clinical skills, uh, and then uh, we have to give a feedback uh, to each student depend on their ability. Jadi uh, selama proses uh, salah satu assessment itu pakai blended. Uh, patient encounter mahasiswa ini bisa dibagi menjadi 4 sampai 5 kelompok eh, dalam proses tutorial uh, kemudian 
uh, observasinya itu bisa dilakukan dengan video. Tentunya kita harus uh, membuat video yang bagus atau skenario yang bagus, uh, sehingga nanti mahasiswa setelah melihat kasusnya, nanti bisa membuat diagnosa, membuat intervensi uh, sesuai dengan uh, clinical finding yang didapatkan di dalam uh, proses tersebut. Kemudian, Um, pasien ini tidak diketahui oleh mahasiswa, tentu saja tetap harus sesuai dengan capaian pembelajaran mahasiswa. Nah, kemudian setelah selesai, nanti fokus ke clinical skills-nya, apa yang harus diperbaiki dalam video itu, apa yang kurang. Kemudian masing-masing mahasiswa nanti akan diberikan feedback, jadi uh, providing a feedback each student. And then the reflection after implementation. Uh, we have to know that uh, whatever forum and online video conference and effective substitute for face-to-face -face tutorial is unclear. Uh, we know that uh, a discussion uh, with a video is uh, effective substitute so that you have to uh, have a online discussion uh, uh, to the the good as online format promoted to the students. Jadi untuk beberapa hasil uh, temuan kita memang diskusi video itu merupakan uh, pengganti yang efektif bagi uh, apa mahasiswa selama proses pandemi ini. Dan juga perlu kita ketahui bahwa ketika diskusi online itu menunjukkan uh, memang harus banyak diperakarsai mahasiswa misalnya masih aktif. Jadi kalau uh, kalau forum online yang baik, harus memang dirancang dengan baik, maka menjadi pembelajaran yang lebih baik. So that, uh, I guess, uh, against online discussion, that uh, one the, that most online interaction that we know that uh, where student offer knowledge is increased uh, with a little evidence with a new knowledge creation. Mahasiswa yang aktif itu biasanya lebih banyak berpikir kritis. Nah, kelemahannya pada mahasiswa ini biasanya berinteraksi satu sama lain. So, the week of the online system is uh, uh, difficult to interact uh, 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 and students. And then, uh, the reflection more is... Uh, You know the instructor plays an integral role ensuring successful forum outcome. Artinya apa bahwa dosen ini punya peranan yang penting atau clinical teacher itu punya peranan yang penting pada fasilitator untuk memfasilitasi step by step sehingga perlu persiapan yang matang. Then we have to have a good communication with the student, with the uh, preceptor in hospital. We have a good communication to the uh, staff, so uh, we can facilitate a student uh, when we have uh, a teaching and learning. And the important case, we have have we changed something? It's uh, according to Carl Hart and Trehan. Uh, the situation make us aligning people with plan resources and changing. Cultures. Kuncinya bahwa situasi uh, pandemik ini membuat kita bisa beradaptasi dengan orang lain. Kemudian bisa juga kita rencanakan uh, ulang terkait dengan SDM dan juga akan merubah budaya kita. Terutama sekarang ini budaya kita menjadi budaya new normal. I think it all. Thank you very much. And I give it. Uh, again to the moderator. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, William, for your informative presentation. Okay, but I will now it's the time. Uh, that was the presentations by our speakers today. And now it's the time for discussion session. There are several questions that already come in the question and answer room chat, and Dr. Sandeep has already answered the question. So uh, I welcome you, uh, the audience, to give the questions for Boimo. But first of all, I would like to read several questions that 
given by the audience from YouTube streaming. Okay, Dr. Sandeep, we have Pak Rahmat from Sikas Maluku Pustaka. He asked about, um, what is your opinion about plasma contalence therapy as one solution in treating COVID-19 patients? Okay, would you answer the question now? Please, uh, can you repeat, please? Can you repeat, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, Pak Rahman from Sikas Maluku Musaja asked about what is your opinion about plasma contalence therapy as one solution in treating COVID-19 patients? About the personal contact. I, okay. As I mentioned in the chat also, one uh, thing that if there is a personal contact, we have to make sure that from where it is coming. So where is the source? So if I am going to in contact as a health worker, if I go to treat any patient with COVID, so I should keep this data aware to everybody. And I should be self-isolated from others in the family, in the uh, other workers also. So that, that does not mean that I am infected. I am taking proper prevention by PPE, by wearing gloves, by uh, washing my hand with sanitizer after and before meeting with the patient. But we have to make this uh, system means in our mindset that yes, I am treating, so I have to be isolated from the society and I should clear mainly mention not that hide that data that I have met with a COVID patient. I have handled the patient, so I should clear the data to everybody, mention that, and make self-isolation. As I told, that all patients not dying, there is immunity power is there. So it is not that I am going to meet a patient, I will be dying. So if we know that I have met with the patient, I can be more, take the preventive measure to spread the disease means prevent the spreading of the disease. Okay, madam. Okay. Uh, Parama is uh, the focus of the question is about the plasma contalence therapy. Do you agree about that? Plasma contalence therapy. Do you agree about Which therapy, madam, cannot hear? Which therapy? Okay, so uh, Farma asked about what is your opinion? What is your opinion of plasma contalence therapy as one solution in treating COVID nineteen patients? Uh, I cannot hear again. I cannot hear, madam. Can, can you type or okay, what I therapy? Plasma concurrent therapy. What do you think about that? For treating the patient. I don't understand. Okay, did you hear? Cannot hear, madam. Which therapy? I cannot hear. Which therapy? Uh, you are... couldn't hear. Plasma. Plasma therapy. Plasma. Yes. Okay. What do you think about that? Plasma yes, yes. Plasma yeah. therapy. No, actually, this one, as I told, that immunity system. So plasma is from same uh, type of immunity also should give. So who is going to give the plasma? That we have to think. Suppose we are not allowing other patient to come into the hospital at present, as the hospital are treating COVID. So we are not allowing normal patient also normal delivery patient or normal other case also to come into the hospital. So how we can collect the plasma? How we can in, uh, isolate the plasma? And how we assure that that person who is donating plasma, he don't have COVID? Because if I test now, maybe the test come negative, but he has infection in COVID. We don't know that. So we cannot think that, yes, 
this plasma therapy is very easy and we can give it to everybody. We can try as a clinical trial, we must try that source. Like uh, we are giving the dengue also, the platelet is low, then we are giving the blood, uh, means the blood system if you infuse. But it is not that easy that taking one plasma sample from, for COVID and give to the COVID patient. So it is very difficult thing. And if, but in last stages, if there is no option, we can try, of course. Okay. Thank you for the answer, Dr. Kajar. I hope uh, Rahmat is uh, agree with the answer. And then the next question is from Istri. I don't know whether it is he or she. And the question is, how Malaysia government, mainly Ministry of Health, able to suppress the number of deaths and, require, and recovery quite fast? Shall I repeat the question? Uh, means you are telling that Malaysia government mainly in health ministry or hospital able to suppress the number of death and recovery is quite fast. No, it is that there is no suppression is there. So uh, actually they are taking proper measures to control the disease. As I told, they have one hospital, they have found 80 of the health worker have been affected. They are affected with COVID, the health 80. So they closed down the hospital. Immediately they planned another hospital can accommodate 1,500 people. It is not 50 people or 10 people. 1,500 people can accommodate. So accordingly, they have kept another hospital ready. As soon as this hospital is closed down with the health workers is affected, they open another hospital. The police affected so they are keeping the data. They isolate the police and treat. It is not that immediately they release or something. So it is a proper way of handling the uh, things. It is not that surprising, oh, there is no infection. This hospital is affected, no problem. We keep the patients there. We don't open another hospital. They are opening another hospital. So that hospital can cater the infected person if suppose they are doing random checking in the weight market, they found, okay, this case is positive. They seal the weight market. You understand 91 weight, weight market in the Malaysia. They are supplying the vegetables, food to local people. So that weight market is uh, favorable weight market closed, total closed because they found the infection. After few days, again, the test after monitoring, they are opening, but not that big weight market closed so the vegetables source they have to source other weight market so like that way they are controlling the matters okay okay thank you very much for the answer the question is uh, how long how long the time that, uh, that was taken in Malaysia to, to normalize the patient during the pandemic? No, actually the time limit is uh, we have started, Malaysia started the lockdown from 16th March. So 16th March, they start for one month, again they extend the MCO, movement control order they tell. Accordingly, they are again extended. March, they have opened the flight up to 31st March so that other international persons can go back to their country. But many countries now already sealed their airport. So now still uh, they have uh, closed and they have extended the MCO. Like now they have extended up to 9th of June. So we hope, but they have lifted many uh, bindings. So they are allowing many things. Like now they have allowed, I just told, they have allowed tennis playing, they have allowed restaurant to open, operate, like that stage by stage, not at a glance they have opening. All the malls now opening, all shops now opening, but there is limitation. You, If you go to Tesco, Giant, you have 20 minute time, 30 minute time, fixed. More than that, they are not allowing. You are, when you are entering, time is noted. 
so like that the stage by stage it is opening so at present the date is 9 june so they will open but there is already a monitorium of organizing any event up to 31st june right 30th june already previously and they have extended the education sector also no uh, on i mean physical class etc except for certain courses uh, up to 31st december like that so uh, the date will again they will think and it is also come up with the infection rate etc but at present it is up to 9th june Okay, so now Malisha is still working on it to normalize the situation, right? Yes, madam. So uh, now Malisha is still working to normalize the situation. Is it? Yes, is it, right? Yes. So we are working okay. uh, on this uh, online system and also some. we are doing office work also many office open many cars moving in um, now on road and interstate if anybody want to go they have to take special permission and also that flight also running from one state to another state the students and who have want to go with special permission they can uh, go and board the flight and go to other places okay thank you dr pajar Now, uh, question from Hero uh, Solisio. No, how to prepare for more more new cases in Malaysia? Uh, how to prepare? How to prevent new new more cases in Malaysia? Oh, that is only by uh, means by screening. Ah, uh, there is uh, only prevention. Right, like, uh, they are making maintaining social distance. They are doing the thermal checking. Now in Tesco, they have make fixed on a big uh, machine. You don't have to do like this uh, test in like thermometer like that. If you go stand, the image will come up with the temperature. As I told that uh, they are using the mobile app in the Tesco malls. Whenever you go, you have to scan the code and time, date, temperature of that area will be. recorded so accordingly they are monitoring and they are monitoring the spreading of the disease okay okay thank you dr sandar dr pader uh bapa ibu uh we see you open the question and answer session if there are another question that you will ask our speakers we will call dr pader for that Okay, so there are several questions that already given by the participants and already answered by Dr. Potter in the question and answer room chat. Okay, we have one question for Puinu here. Uh, Puinu, well, this is mixed yeah, between uh, Japanese language and Bahasa. Should I translate? Uh, should I translate in English? Or okay. you? And uh, Bahasa. I have not seen the video yet. Okay. Yes, Untuk please translate. Untuk mahasiswa profesi dalam dalam mencapai pembelajaran, apakah ada metode yang bisa digunakan jika mahasiswa belum bisa melakukan praktik di rumah sakit? Oke, okay, Bimo, uh, mohon jawabannya. Baik. Uh... Uh, thank you very much, but I will answer with uh, Bahasa because uh, uh, you know that uh, we have uh, to share to the partition, all of them is uh, from Indonesia. Baik, untuk pertanyaan uh, dari Mas Suyanto, untuk uh, klinik atau laboratorium yang tidak bisa dilakukan atau digunakan pada saat ini ini bisa diganti dengan berbagai metode 
Contohnya, misalnya, contohnya kita misalnya. bisa memberikan pendidikan kesehatan yang kemudian direkam, kemudian bisa diupload di media sosial, kemudian disampaikan di komunitas dan keluarga, kemudian tanggapannya seperti apa. Kemudian ada juga metode yang dilakukan itu eh, yang sekarang itu ada eh, eh, yang sudah atau jadi eh, apa relawan. Nah sebagai relawan itu contohnya misalnya eh, dua minggu jadi eh, relawan, kemudian dua minggu eh, menjadi eh, apa eh, di karantina. Jadi itu total empat minggu itu bisa dikatakan sudah empat uh, SKS yang dipakai mahasiswa. Nah, kemudian apalagi yang bisa kita lakukan pada saat uh, mahasiswa belum bisa praktek itu kita bisa kerjasama juga dengan uh, puskesmas atau pada saat proses pembelajaran di uh, apa rumah sakit bisa dengan preseptor kita buat WA group. Nah, di dalam WA group ini kita bisa uh, membuat atau E, contohnya misalnya kalau di e, puskesmas nih kita bisa buat e, yang di e, puskesmas, puskesmas tersebut ada ndak ODP-nya atau OTG-nya berapa? Nah dalam kita bisa buat WA group di situ ada OTG ada ODP. Nah itu bisa kita berikan informasi e, apa yang harus dilakukan ODP atau OTG sehingga nanti e, apa yang uh, ilmu apa yang bisa kita berikan itu bisa um, membuat ODP atau OTG itu bisa berkurang kecemasannya dan kita juga bisa uh, melakukan praktek saat di situ. Nah kemudian uh, bagaimana dengan uh, keterampilan yang tidak bisa dilakukan pada saat uh, pandemi ini. Nah Uh, awal Juni ini kan sudah mulai new normal, tapi kita lihat juga apakah mahasiswa bisa masuk ke rumah sakit atau tidak. Nah, harapannya kita akan peta ulang dulu, dipetakan ulang dulu kompetensi yang mana yang memang tidak uh, bisa dilakukan, kita kumpulkan uh, apa kompetensinya, kemudian nanti kita redesign kembali untuk uh, prakteknya atau profesinya, Nah, kita redesign ini kita bisa buat untuk prakteknya itu lebih lebih ringkas, lebih cepat tanpa mengurangi kompetensi yang dilakukan oleh mahasiswa. Nah, sehingga ketika sudah ada penyesuaian penyesuaian di peta atau redesign kurikulum tadi, ini mahasiswa bisa mencapai kompetensinya. Nah, kemudian Apabila mahasiswa itu sudah masuk ke rumah sakit, berarti ya kita gunakan protokol COVID-19 supaya mahasiswa aman, sehat, tidak tertular oleh COVID. Nah, bagaimana yang lain yang saya jelaskan tadi, banyak juga mahasiswa yang sudah bekerja tapi belajar, misalnya pada saat profesi. Nah, berarti pada saat profesi tersebut, Ketika mahasiswa bekerja, itu bisa juga dihitung kompetensinya pada saat melakukan tindakan. Nah, kompetensinya apa yang sudah tersapai? Apa yang belum? Nah, itu yang kita list pada saat apa proses pembelajaran profesi. Nah, kemudian pada saat kita apa Belajar dengan mahasiswa juga harus perlu kita ketahui juga bahwa banyak masalah pada saat proses pembelajaran yang tentu saja bisa kita komunikasikan supaya berjalan dengan baik. Nah, yang terpenting bagaimana cara kita mengevaluasinya? Nah, pengalaman yang sudah kita lakukan di profesi yang di Unimus itu kompetensi kita lakukan. Komputer base uh, test, jadi pakai CBT tiap stase. Jadi setiap stase, stase kita berikan uh, apa ujian CBT. Kemudian uh, setelah selesai semua stase yang sudah dilakukan, termasuk untuk karya tulis ilmiah, itu kita berikan juga untuk uh, apa uh, ujian tryout, ujian tryout beberapa kali baik internal maupun dengan aitnema maupun dengan eh, apa 
uh, dengan nasional atau ukom. Nah, itu yang kita lakukan uh, selama mahasiswa belum bisa masuk rumah sakit. Mungkin itu, Bu Desi, saya kembalikan lagi waktunya. Ya, terima kasih, Bu Inu. Oke, okay, we have one more question from Dr. Uh, for Dr. Sandi Podar from Pauziania. Uh, how, according to you, regarding a new pandemic COVID-19 cluster is found, what should be prepared from health workers, especially for nurses? Okay, Dr. Potter, can you hear the question? <clears throat> Means how the COVID can be uh, control uh, spreading among the health worker? The question? Yeah, among health workers, especially for nurses. So, uh, according to you, uh, because uh, the COVID-19 cluster, the new COVID-19 cluster is found, So what should be prepared for the health workers, especially for nurses? Okay. So as uh, we know that it is a highly spreading uh, disease. So when the patient is there in any ward, any room, that room already have some air that is infected air. But the spreading through the droplet, if I talk or sneeze, that droplet will spread to other person. So if I maintain a social distance of two meter, the droplet cannot come. But as when I am health worker, I have to go and serve the patient. I have to go and take the blood sample from the patient. So the nurse and health worker should wear gloves, PPE, and use sanitizer before going. And after also, they should change Uh, when you coming out from the patient place, you should change your uh, the everything, the gloves, etc. Before going to other place, and after change, now suppose in India or other places, what they are doing after they giving the duty of the health persons, health personnel around seven days continuous. You cannot go out from the hospital. Seven days continuous, you stay in hospital. After that. Go for cell quarter nine, another place for 14 days. Then you go to the home. So there is a difficult time, and all the health workers is facing, and they are doing. And also another thing is, the health worker, as you are the nurses and ladies, I know that uh, many of you don't take proper nutrition of your own. So that is the main cause of the spreading of disease. as less immunity so you have to boost your immunity the health workers should take more fruits more vegetables more protein diet like egg etc so that they can have the immunity to prevent the disease milk okay, vitamin vitamin c fruits you should take more it is not that always sacrifice for family okay i am uh, the my son my husband will take this no you have to take care of your own health and you have to take more foods more uh, protein diet so that you have the capability to, to boost your immune system and your health worker means co worker and also there is another thing mental anxiety if mental anxiety is there when i am isolated from my family already i am stressed yes my son is i cannot see for seven days what he or she is doing i cannot see my family if i can come back to my family or not that type of stress is very much dangerous for working stress that stress should be lowered by talking by chatting by phone is there so you can chat with your friends and you can make uh, what like this online you can talk you can sing song or something so that your mind will be diverted and you will be less stressed and your immunity will be more so this is my thinking i think it will be helpful for all okay thank you very much dr for our for the answer uh the bible actually we want to continue this but we have our limitation of time so we finally come to the end of 
part of this webinar session. Before I close the webinar, I would like to take the conclusion from what speakers have presented. During the pandemic situation, nursing learning process and research must continue with some adjustment. Several learning strategies can be applied, including online class to the students, such as tutorial. And uh, researches have already been done regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in Malaysia, research explained that majority of the public of the Malaysian public agreed that COVID-19 will be successfully handled. And thus, let us hope this condition will be soon getting better and all of our daily routines return to normal. And as Dr. Potter said before, from the quote, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged change ourselves. I would like to thank so much for the speakers, Dr. Sandy Bodar and Kuindu for the informative and interesting presentation. And thank you all the participants for the active contribution. Hopefully the setting the webinar will be beneficial for all of us. I mean I'm your Balamid. Thank you, Wasamalaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I will give the time to our MC today. The time is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Desi, to be a great moderator today. Giving of a donation from Dr. Sandy Poda. We would like to invite Nurse Amy Deity and Nurse Mahmouda to give coffee donation. Please welcome on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Thank you, Dr. Sandeep, for the donation, for your donation. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandeep, for your donation, for Indonesia. Okay, I will inform the information for all the participants. From the link of certificate will be sent to email participants who fill out the registration and evaluation form. The time is the maximum of three weeks after the webinar. For further information, please you can contact the committee. Untuk link certificate akan dikirim ke email peserta yang melakukan registrasi awal dan akhir. Waktunya maksimal tiga minggu setelah acara webinar ini. Dan untuk info lebih lanjut, silakan bisa menghubungi kontak person uh, yang sudah ada. Terima kasih. On behalf of the host and committee, we would like to say thanks again for speaker and all and all of the audience for active participation. Thank you and good afternoon. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.